The only people for me are the mad ones. The world is filled with the boring and the barely conscious. The misery loves company. But we don't have to live this way. Jessica and I are here to talk to those the system rejects, to radicals and thought criminals. The ones who never yawn or say a commonplace thing, but push the boundaries of acceptable discourse. Those who stare reality in the face and dare it to be different. History isn't made by the timid, and fun is not had by the perpetually afraid. We are the mad ones. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Mad Ones. I'm your, <laughs> oh wow, it's been two weeks since I've done this and I'm not sure I remember how to introduce anything host, Cam Harless. <laughs> and with me as always is your Where's White Headphones hostess, Miss Jessica Green. That's really good, thank you. How, They're always, how, go how ahead. Are you? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> um, I'm good. The room I'm standing in has a hole in the ceiling. My my husband stepped through the ceiling. So that's right. You you told me about that. Yeah. I actually have a story which we can do in a second about when I had a job where that happened with one guy who was probably the biggest idiot I've ever worked with. I'll make up <laughs> some fake name for him, or maybe I'll use his real name, and you won't know it's fake. But either way, I'll talk about it. Uh, but. Joining us tonight is the meanest woman on Twitter, according to certain nerds, uh, a fighter of cancer and the best person to ask about postmodernism, I guess. Uh, you may know her as Willingsby from Tennessee or PhD, Miss Allie. Hey, y'all. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping I don't bomb out on, you know, describing this stuff, so... <laughs> Well, here's here's the thing about postmodernism mm -hmm. is actually you talking about it will be possibly the first conversation I'll have had with someone on it mm -hmm. that wasn't a retard. So, okay. well, I'm glad so, to know I'm not retarded at least. Yeah. <laughs> and because you know, I, I, but go ahead. <laughs> so in this scenario, he's going to the special children's school and sitting down at the tables and asking them. <laughs> About postmodernism. <laughs> well, he, I went to college, which is rife with with uh, uh, with dumb people, yeah. and I I took intro to philosophy and a couple other classes, and the only conversation that I could ever get out of a postmodernist or about postmodernism was them talking about how we don't know if the table in front of us is real, and it was maybe the most like I've heard it so many times. But I have never actually like with with Je Jessica, you know, she's listened to Jordan Peterson and done that. I've I don't listen to Jordan Peterson. Right. I've I've I, I don't listen to. I've never looked into it beyond like some basic Google searches, mm -hmm. and so I've never had a good representation of the philosophy. And I'm okay. curious about it because there's so much hatred for it. And I'll be honest. Like, I, I don't think you're retarded, <laughs> but most of the people that I've talked to or who talk about it yeah. seem to be. Mm -hmm. So I figure, you know, that's a good little mixture of people to talk about postmodernism. Me, who I, I don't give too much of a crap about a lot of philosophy things. I mean, I do, but it, I, I only have so much time in my life. <laughs> yeah. then, That's something too that like a lot of people are going to delve into because it's, I mean, it, how do I read Derrida? But like it's read yeah, like fault. like especially no. like Der Derrida is right. very and he's hard to read. So like people aren't going to go out of their way to read something like that. Um, I honestly, and I hate to say this because of all the shit that happened on Twitter last week, uh, I got into it because oh. of a debate that I I saw with Thaddeus Russell. <laughs> Oh, which I, you know, don't necessarily agree. And I have some issues with, with that take, but I also didn't go back and listen to some of the podcasts where you apparently clarified or whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I will, I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was that was with a will for him that he did. So like, and I, I, to that, I was just like, that made me interested in learning more because it kind of seemed like a lot of, at that point I was listening to other people on the subject who might not necessarily know what they're talking about. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. have respect for it. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah. In me, to be fair, just to know how, how, what we're getting into and how we're getting into it, I exclusively know about po postmodernism through people like Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Had never heard that word before him. Uh, kind of have a rough idea of what it means because of him, but um, overall have a very negative image painted for me. Right. But I'm I'm a fair and open-minded person, so that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm like outset against you at the beginning. I just yeah. um, want you to know where my perception is coming from. Okay. Yeah. So l l without mentioning tables, <laughs> could you give me the ground floor of postmodernism? Because a lot of what I've, what I've picked up and why I named the episode, the endless question is it seems to be a philosophy centered around the idea of questioning everything. And that's just osmosis. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so the three things that I would say would be um, skepticism, which is kind of where like you would question a lot of things. Um, relativism, because there's certain points of it that has to do where it's relative to you, um, as opposed to something that that, and then subjectivism, meaning that like objective truth, you don't necessarily believe that, that exists, which is where a lot of people have the issue. I think is more the um, subjectivism part of it that people get mad about. Right. So <laughs> like those three things I think are kind of like a nice little summation of, of what it would be about. But you have a lot of different thinkers too, who, you know, you have like Nisha, um, Leotard, Derrida, who is very boring. I will admit that. <laughs> He's not easy to get through at all. But he does like actually like have some takes that are interesting. And then Foucault is probably one of the bigger ones that you've heard about. That's what most that's who like most people really talk about. Um so I did write notes. So if I'm looking off, it's just because I, I want to hit some points. <laughs> one, one question, and this is and this is sort of tied into the situation from last week. Mm -hmm. But are any of the thinkers, and I'm not using this to poison the well, yeah. Um, but it's like every now and then you find out this fact about someone, you're like, oh, were any of the major thinkers pedophiles? <laughs> because... no, I mean, as far as I know, they weren't pedophiles. There were some claims about like Foucault, but it was like one guy who came after him and said it was well known, but like nobody else supported that. So okay. take well, that for like... what it's worth. Um, but there were times where like there were a few of them who supported uh, abolishing age of consent, but like, like to me, that's a whole different issue than necessarily like just wanting to abolish it gotcha. because you're a fucking kid. Like, yeah. oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, it's, um, well, and I ask not because of uh, yeah. Thaddeus Russell or any of that, but um, what was interesting to find out <clears throat> in recent days was that, <laughs> because I don't know if you know anything about John Maynard Keynes. But John Maynard Keynes is the guy who did the Keynesian economics, mm -hmm. you know, and and one of the big pushes against him, even by some thinkers today, is that he had um, low. I can't remember which one's the good one. I think low time pre low time preference, mm -hmm. and they they made this claim based on the fact that he was a homosexual. Mm -hmm. But if you actually look at his history, he was a straight up pe a pedophile or a yeah. hebophile, or however you want to do it, say it or talk about it. But it's it, it's just interesting to me that people were like, no, his bad ideas have nothing to do with that. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's hard to see how little someone cares about the future <laughs> when that is something that they do, <laughs> if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that it colors the reality. speaks somewhat to your character and, and yeah. you know, that type of thing. Um, does it make them, okay. So this might doesn't necessarily make them wrong. Hold on. Can we, can we stop and back up for a second? Because that's somewhat, hold on. <laughs> we are less than 10 minutes in and we're talking about whether Keynes is a pedophile or not. I need to back up and just rewind okay. a little bit. Okay. So um, we're talking about postmodernism, which to me represented the idea that there was not necessarily an objective truth. Right. If there's not an objective truth, then that can lead a person to, um, you know, not necessarily have a, their own self uh, created morality. And in self created, created moralities, we can have all sorts of sort of an anathemas to what we consider normal, including right. things like pedophilia. Right. Just to ca catch everybody right. up who right. is not necessarily inside baseball for Twitter postmodernism. 
<laughs> what you guys were talking about. I just wanted okay. to make sure that I'm caught up as far as that goes. So yeah, and, and the reason yeah. I ask is one, curiosity, and two, oh. it's things that you do in your life can color your philosophy in negative ways. Mm -hmm. And so whether or not they're right or wrong, it's interesting to note if there is any disgusting or horrible um, backing or motivation to what they're saying. And so I'm not saying that postmodernism is like that, but mm -hmm. since I've been hearing about this economic, this e economist yeah. who is like this and whose mm -hmm. theories ignored, you know, um, high time preference, it's just interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder when you, you have that subjective kind of morality, if there were any bad guys in the wings, I'm not saying they all are. But I'm just yeah. curious. I was just curious. Are there any? Yeah. You said the cult was there was an accusation, but it doesn't seem to be founded on anything. Yeah, from from my understanding, anyway, from what I've read okay. about. Um, and that just actually curious. kind of a little bit ties into like what Nisha was about. Was that like in order to understand something, like if you're reading a text, it does actually tell you a little bit more about the if you know the person, because a lot of these things are narratives, and when you're writing something, you are putting in whether it's an ideology, a religion or um, just any type of idea like that comes from human consciousness. Cause you're looking at like, especially if you're getting like evidence or like say you're writing about history, you're looking at documents and somebody else could look at those documents and that evidence and think a completely different thing depending on their worldview. Right. That's true. So it does and matter. We, <laughs> yeah. And we, we, yeah, we have special in, in theology, we have special words for that. Yeah. There's exegesis and eisegesis. Mm -hmm. So there's the idea that when you're exegeting scripture or you're reading it correctly and trying your best to, yeah. it's when you're looking at context and you're looking at historical, cultural, all sorts of different mm -hmm. things and re trying to read it as it was written to whom it was written and what we can get from that. Whereas eisegesis is the idea that you read what you want into the text. So it right. doesn't it's all very self-centered in a sense. It's mm -hmm. it's not reading it honestly, if that makes sense. So I I, I understand your point from a theological perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind, you guys got to put training wheels on this conversation because I am not a theologian nor am I a philosopher. In fact, I um, find philosophy very difficult to understand. Um, I don't consider myself a stupid person, but mm -hmm that this is um, not necessarily something that clicks for me. So I hear something like, there might not be an objective truth. Okay, well, <laughs> that's hard for me because of things like science. We, right. because of science, can build technologies based on evidence-based uh, trust we have in concepts that mm -hmm. seem to be objective truths. So <clears throat> how far does this go? You know, what are we talking about? Are we talking about some, um, you know, academic, theory or are we talking about something that is applicable in real life because there seem to be people who want to apply it to our social uh, the the lives we experience socially with our interactions with other human beings mm -hmm. and then there's like an academic area where i can consider okay mm -hmm. obviously throughout history um I, old ideas that were thought true for very long periods of time were struck down yeah that happens in <laughs> favor of greater truths uh, you know, not often, but has happened often enough that I can acknowledge something like that exists. Mm -hmm. um, you know, or is it we carry this into our whole life and say nothing really means anything? Mm -hmm. uh, cats and dogs marrying together, mass hysteria, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, so uh, maybe break it down for me just a little bit more, if you don't mind, like, what are we talking about here? A real life idea or an academic idea? Well, I mean, I think you could probably apply it to both. Okay. <laughs> That's where it gets kind of difficult. But I would say like with science, the idea that they don't, because a lot of people say like postmodernism and science don't go together. But the whole idea of being a scientist is questioning things, right? And sure. try and disprove what we claim to be a truth, which is why you come into content. Like a lot of people say, oh, this is a truth claim. Um, because you've, we've seen things in science like develop over time, whether it be new drugs or knowing new information or like 
even if you go back like the, to the 1800s when you know you know pus used to be a sign of infection right for i mean no it used to be thought that it was part of the healing process sorry i messed that part up right right, right. Um, surgery but i was really like isn't it though like <laughs> yeah, it right. so now we know that it's more of a sign of infection i i swapped those i'm sorry um <laughs> <laughs> so it's just constantly like asking those questions and trying to revise based on the evidence that we currently have. Right. right. Well, that's why planes stay in the air because yeah. of the principles yeah. of, you know, inertia and lift and all of these things. Like we yeah. can reasonably trust that when you send a plane into the air that it will fly if it's mm -hmm. made correctly. So yeah. uh, obviously yeah. there's an objective truth. You know, if you leave your house from your second floor window, you're probably going to break your leg like gravity has a constant. So when I hear, you know, hey, there might not be an objective truth, I'm like, what do you mean? If you can maybe go from there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but even the constant of gravity has been revised previously. So okay. I mean, I mean, not like necessarily the idea that gravity exists, but like the actual constant of it or whatever. And it might not be I didn't know that. every place that you go, like, I mean, in terms of like other planets might not you know, don't necessarily have the same constant either. So right, right. did you have something to say, Cam? You look no, like I was just going to say when it comes okay. to gravity, there is some interesting stuff that happens around black holes, like time dilation, yeah. which would put into question our concept of time and all these yeah. different mm -hmm. things. And so, I mean, it, it would make sense that with that sort of phenomena, mm -hmm. that there would be some sort of revision in how we understand gravity. Right. So, I mean, and that that's part of what subjectivism kind of means is that it's not, it might not be universal like across everything in terms okay. of postmodern. Do you know what I mean? Like there might be other situations where the, where X, Y, and Z might not happen. And this might be where I get confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I, under, I, I understand where you are. Now you know, Jessica's moving. I can see her moving now. It's no longer a poop face. Oh, hey, hi. hi. I could hear you guys. It was like I was dead. I could hear you, but you couldn't hear me. <laughs> but please continue. I did hear you. Okay. Did that make uh, sense? It did make sense to me. Yes. And, and I, um, I like agree with that in the sense of uh, we can't hold to any scientific notion so hard and fast that it makes us unable to understand that, you know, the gravitational constant on Mars is different than it is here. Like the bot, the shape of the planet is I think smaller and further mm -hmm. away from the sun. So it's different. Um, yeah, so like, I, I understand that. I guess I understand that. So, uh, but for like the most part in our everyday experience, a correctly made plane will fly aerodynamics works. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. um, so there are things that are constant, like even, you know, have contributed. And I think this is, you know, the Jordan Peterson understanding of it going to leak through here. Um, our uh, human evolution <clears throat> has depended on constants in our uh, interactions with each other that work and those that don't. So even if you don't want to bring like, um, you know, a the theological morality into it, this is correct because God says it's correct. We can kind of look at our anthropo anthropological evolution through time and see that these things are correct because they have enabled survival in our species. And it seems as though to me that, um, and maybe this is an improper usage of postmodernism by people, and you can maybe help me clarify on this, mm -hmm. that they take this idea that um, because there's no objective truth, we can throw out the things that we know work. And, and, and you know, we can make things work all sorts of ways, which don't get me wrong, experiment is a great idea, but for the most part, we find that it does like detriment to our societies as a whole when we let like decadence and degeneracy and all of those kinds of things take over what we know to be good social interactions just survival wise. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense and I hope I didn't go, go too long explaining that. No, I, I think I get what you're saying. So let me respond and then you can like follow right. up if I'm not like understanding. Cause there actually is like an anthropological, there are like a couple of anthropological or anthropologists who like talked a little bit about um, uh, cultural relativism where they went and, and you look at different um, cultural norms across different societies and it's not necessarily a constant 
that like like what we view as like the I guess like the moral correct position or whatever isn't necessarily mm -hmm. the same thing as some other place in um, you know the world would view it. Okay. Right? So, and, and it might be like, according to like where they live, how they live, uh, like all of this stuff comes into play, right? Because like you, your survival would also depend on like how, like what kind of climate you live in, live in or like what you're culturally, um, what culturally is acceptable, right? So um, how do I really, uh, so like good and bad things are kind of become more of like, they're more like habitual stuff Mm -hmm. uh, that we've developed over time and like how do you know that like sorry i say like a lot <laughs> um, i don't know just but, flow flow baby yeah, that's where the good I, stuff comes I, I, you know, I just I don't know. anyway um but like how do you know that it's necessarily like good for every society to be the way that we are and a lot of times when we look at ourselves as a moral um good or like our society is the best society like the way that it's structured, you end up with imperialism because then we need to show the rest of the world that sure, yeah, this is this is the moral good and like you're wrong. Completely. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Let me maybe, maybe clarify what I mean by stuff like yeah. that. So um, throughout most cultures in the world, even mm -hmm. before they encountered any of each other, like the pairing off of single men and women, and now mm -hmm. that's not everywhere. Some societies have plural marriage, and I know that that exists, but for the most part, the individual pairings of men and women, or just, you know, single pairing couples, monogamous single pairing couples, stuff like that, that goes on irrespective of culture. And maybe I'm using a bad example. I mean, I'm sure I could, if I had more time to think about it, uh, could come up with yeah. um, a more universal example. But are there not things you think that like, um, have maybe been proven just through time to, to work for people. And, you know, okay, so I guess maybe you're making, I'm questioning myself out loud, even as I go yeah, through that. No, that's fine. Because you also, yeah. but what about like homosexuality, like same sex parents? So like, if you're saying right. they're pairing off as men and women, like, is that, is that right. what you're getting at? I'm not. Right. So, I mean, I think even. It's and, not necessarily like they're not bad people. No, <laughs> no, I don't. Th I don't think that they are. Um, And I, what I have found in my experience with gay couples uh -huh. is that one, I, maybe masculine and feminine doesn't exactly describe it. Maybe dominant and subservient describes it. Um, But there still is a power dynamic that exists there mm -hmm. that I think is emulated in the male female relationship that you know, I don't know that maybe I, I think dominant submissive maybe explains what I'm trying to say as nearest as I can get it. So it seems that there like are hierarchical social structures that work. And if even if you go into like the Andes Mountains, where a tribe who, you know, hunts with, you know, poison darts still has some sort of hierarchical, hierarchical structures within their communities. And so let's let's even throw out the male female coupling let's just say hierarchies hierarchies clearly are sort of this universal thing that we've found that definitely seem to help our societies function better otherwise without them there seems to be a lot of chaos um are there are there things would you would you say a hierarchy is like a universal constant in our social relationships i probably wouldn't <laughs> right right okay <laughs> To say so, that's not always like like the uh, that's not necessarily a positive thing um, right. to have hierarchy in certain relationships. Um, and like I've definitely seen people who. Can I ask you why? Go ahead. Uh, what? No, no, just just why? Um, I, I don't think why. It's necessarily. Okay, how do I put this? But like, I don't think that it's necessarily um, like there are some places that will. Right. Some people will thrive on hierarchy, but I don't think that that's every, but that that's going to apply to every single person. Do you think there are any natural lacks of hierarchy within human interaction? Cause I feel like regardless of whether or not they're healthy, whether or not any mm -hmm. of this, I do think that I, I don't think I've ever seen a relationship that didn't have some form of hierarchy in some way, or at least um, I wouldn't dominant and submissive sounds so weird to me, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you not in like but, a yeah. sex way. <laughs> yeah, but that's where my brain goes. 
but no, like, like there, there are friends, like even in friendships, I've found that there is like, yeah, okay. Have yeah. you ever watched how I met your mother? Yeah. So do you know the con the concept from that show called of the reacher and the settler in a relationship? <laughs> yeah. And I always feel like there's even it, it, even in friendships, there's some kind of pull between that in some way. Yeah. There's never a completely co-equal relationship. Right. But I also mm -hmm. don't think that necessarily it's going to be the same person every time. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, and that, and, uh, yeah. You yeah. It may that, slip. Like you, it might swap depending on like what you're talking about and like the right. whatever and what you're doing. Sure. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying this even in a gay couple. This is constantly dominant and this person is constantly right. submissive. Sure. Sure. So that's where it comes in where it wouldn't be universal either. Like in terms of that. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I could definitely see where in certain circumstances they could switch roles or there are like, you know, these odd places here and there, an odd tribe here where it's a matriarchal as opposed to patriarchal structure mm -hmm. or what have you. But still, what remains is the structure. Like, I, I feel that human beings probably thrive on this structure. And so I think a philosophy that suggests the removal of structure, the, the, the structure itself, Self. Itself. Is that? Oh, like. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what. She, she's having issues. Um, uh, but let me, I'll just, since we're waiting on, since we're seeing her poop face right now. Yeah. Um, what, what I was going to say, though, is I think that we don't have to necessarily say oh, that it's a this. constant hierarchy or mm -hmm. constant dominant submissive uh, situation that works the same way every time. Mm -hmm. But I Can do think it's pretty now? constant to see even if there's mutual submission and back and forth. It's like in my house, there are things that I'm, I'm the top of the totem pole for mm -hmm. these things. But when my wife has a baby, she's in charge of everything. I'm only there to fully back her up. That's mm -hmm. the, my e entire existence. Maybe I'll fight someone if I have to, but it's all on her wishes. And so I think that maybe what the constant would be would not be a rigid person to person, exactly the same way, constant hierarchy. But I do think that, I've yet to see a relationship where it doesn't go back and forth and that hierarchy doesn't, I mean, I think that the, the hierarchy exists. It just fluctuates. Does that make sense? Yes. I think I get what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Can you guys we see can me hear now? You now. Yes. Okay. Right? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I, cause I got to the meat of my point right when that happened and I was like, no. double damn. Um, so, okay, so what I was saying is that no matter which way we parse out that structures can switch and so on and so forth, what we're talking about is a structure or a scaffolding that human beings have relied upon uh, for survival. That these obviously impart some sort of survival benefit to us, and that's why we do it. And I'm just trying to go from a completely secular standpoint on this. I'm not even wanting to bring that God says that there are hierarchies and so on and so forth. So uh, what we are talking about with postmodernism, at least in my estimation, my limited estimation of it, is saying that these structures are all thrown into question. So no matter what the structure is, we're saying that it's thrown into question. And I think that a philosophy that wants to throw out the structures, wants to throw out the scaffolding, the skeleton, can appear very threatening to people, especially since we're all very mired in, in thousands and thousands of evolutionary years of evolutionary history that says structures work for us, no matter what form they take, which is why I say, even in a gay couple, I have no problem with a gay couple. I love gay couples. I know many of them. Uh, even in a gay couple, there's their structures and maybe they switch once in a while. And depending on the circumstance, all of that I can see too. What, what I'm trying to maybe pull out that the meat of it is that the structures matter. And postmodernism seems to want to say, in my limited estimation of it, no structures uh, actually matter. They're all questionable. And um, how can you ever really know if, you know, the system that you're relying on is uh, any good? And in that chaos, it seems that it allows a lot of maybe degenerate types of thinking to thrive. And that things that really are threatening to the survival of n maybe not the species, but at least the, the culture that I'm living in seem to uh, be like breeding in this uh, chaos, in this, in this philosophy that says, 
well, are there really any structures that matter? Do you know what I mean? And I don't mean to be like snarky at you. That's just kind of no, what it's, I'm. It's fine. Um, right. Like, and it's not saying that like you can't uh, accept that those are something that you want in your life or anything like that. But like calling into things sure. into question isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, just to see, especially like if you have new evidence that's presented to you. Sure. You sure. Think everything that you're, you know, that you think you know or whatever. So. Um, would you say that's the fatal misunderstanding of the everyman about postmodernism is that it, it feels like it's coming to threaten your structures. It's not intending to do that. It's just an academic philosophy. Well, so with this, I will say there are some people. Um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot a lot of people when they look at postmodernism, they think like, oh, well, it's like just destroying Western civilization. And there are some people yeah. who would probably argue that it it is even within postmodernists or whatnot um, and say that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but it would just have to do with your perspective on that, too. I guess. I don't know. Right. So, <laughs> so, in, so in my. Like, I don't think everything necessarily that we have is, is bad. Um, and, and really the way that I apply it is more of just like the questioning everything and not taking something for truth just because somebody says it is. Um, and understanding that people are coming from a place, like coming from their place. This is where like, okay, so a while ago, I, if you probably remember like people like their truth or whatever. Well, yeah. when it, it, and a lot of people would get mad and say, well, there's only one truth. It's like, yeah, but I get what they're, and I used to be one of those people, honestly, <laughs> that used to piss yeah. me off. But it's like, but if you're having two people talk about something or whatever, or discuss, like if you give, if you put people in, in the same situation and you ask one what happened and the other one what happens, they're going to put their own personal spin on it. They're not mm -hmm. going to necessarily have the same story for you. Yeah. That's true. That's why I went in this testimony. I what you were asking. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. I, yeah. I'm just, I'm listening basically yeah. like just trying to absorb <laughs> what you're saying. And um, I, I guess I'm trying to play devil's advocate mm -hmm. for the way that I hear postmodernism described by what I would call the every man, you know, the, the every tweet men out there who this is kind of like the, I, I there's a um, fear mm -hmm. that accompanies talk of postmodernism. Yeah. That people associate it with drag queen story hour, with Thaddeus Russell saying it's okay to bang kids. Um, <laughs> you said you got some clarification on that. I didn't get it because I was like, I'm out here. No, bro. I didn't. Um, there were people who had tweeted out because Clint had him on his podcast and apparently clarified. I have not listened to it. So I, Okay. I, yeah, neither I did I. So I don't know what his clarification was on that. But I did find it odd considering that like – Part of postmodernism also has to do with like recognizing oppressive like structures and okay. like I don't know a thirteen and a forty year old. There's obviously without it even being a teacher because I believe that was scenario the scenario presented yes. like, was a teacher, right? Yeah. The, um, the scenario was which is there. What he is. But, like I don't understand like why you don't recognize and see that that yeah. that is off, you know? Right, right. Not to mention you're kind of if you're forty year old trying to whatever with a 13 year old or something fucked up about you, but that's all another, <laughs> you know, I just, yeah. I mean, you're not on the same level. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean so to make you answer for him. I'm saying that he has yeah. really put himself out there. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Kim. He has really put himself out there as like a spokesman for this idea of postmodernism. Yeah. And, and then he rolls out. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no. And, and I think, and that's why like, I think after this happened, I tweeted something along the lines of like, you shouldn't take an idea and have it be one person. And then all of a sudden this is like not great. But I think too, yeah, a lot of people yeah. just want to dog postmodernism to begin with and right. not have anything and, good to say. So it was their opportunity to be like, well, look, this is what postmodern, because there were people I liked right. who made comments to where I'm like, that's not everybody, bro. <laughs> like, right. So what I'm saying is it's very easy to paint it that way because there's already yeah. this underlying fear that accompanies the philosophy. It's mm -hmm. Jordan Peterson on YouTube telling everyone, yeah, you see all this madness that's happening? It's happening because of this thing called postmodernism. Mm -hmm. And everybody goes, okay, you're a smarter guy than me. So if you say yeah. it's postmodernism, I see you know, these cities burning down. I see drag queen story hour. Mm -hmm. And if the name I have to attach to it is postmodernism, then, you know, that's, it's a very natural way for people to feel about it. But 
I have this sort of idea that things that get demonized um, probably have a spark of truth to them, and that's why the like the demons attack them. So I'm always interested, you know, to learn like what what is what is the fatal flaw in my understanding about that because I don't. And again, I didn't mean mean to make you answer for Thaddeus because I don't think that you should have to. Only that um, he made himself a representative. So yeah. the, the that fear is something to overcome. Um, what are, if you if you were talking to those people, what would you want them to understand that about the flaw in Jordan? Maybe Jordan Peterson's uh, explanation of it, which is as I kind of laid out all of these things that we're seeing happen in our society, which are, you know, pretty not good from my perspective, at least, uh, come from the concept of postmodernism. What would you maybe want to dispel about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think that necessarily like all of that uh, uh, comes from postmodernism. I think a lot of what happens is people um, say anything that's weird or, or different or like that I don't like, they attribute that label to or whatever. Right. Like I wouldn't take my kid to drag Queen Story Hour. But also sure, part sure. of it is like, like uh, um, I believe it was Foucault who talked against like how social norms um, uh can become like social social norms become more important than laws because like um like that because that's what people are doing like within society mm -hmm. and when you have that it's like how many people are actually taking their kid to drag queen story hour and how many people are talking about it more people are probably talking about it than are actually taking their kid there so yeah more, more of what we should be focused on it is maybe like being against that and making that more of a norm as opposed to um you know I, I don't know <laughs> no that's great actually i think that's really important i'm trying, to, I'm trying. <laughs> I, like so what you're saying about social yeah. norms being uh, social uh like the way that we deal with each other instead of having regulations yeah. we need to have social laws i think getting rid of shaming in a way like enables the government more because yeah. now everything has to be regulated through some kind of like system where a man with a gun will show up and basically can murder yeah. you if you don't. Yeah. Well, and, and going back to like the idea of laws versus so social norms, like there are some places where laws become um, pretty much obsolete just because people aren't following them and you're not going to give everybody a ticket. Right. Like, so like jaywalking, for example, in say like in a big city, you're probably not getting a ticket for that because everybody fucking does it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, um, because that's become what the norm is there. So. So let me, let me ask. Um, I have recently read just a touch of. Do them. Max as or... a po <laughs> <laughs> I have. She'll, she'll come back eventually. Um, okay. What I was saying is I have read a touch of Max or Mox, apparently, Sterner, mm -hmm. and uh, just a little bit of egoism. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, like, when, when I hear people talk about the, the structures and questioning these things, mm -hmm. um, you know, Sterner was really against uh, the concept of ought, mm -hmm. against the concept of anyone having the right outside of you and what you decide and you know that kind of individualist i mean it's i would say it's making me think of egoism but egoism would be i think maybe more individual than mm -hmm. postmodernism would yeah, you I mean, would you link those i i mean i think they could be um similar in terms of <laughs> sorry um yeah i mean in those terms, yes, I think they could be similar, but I will admit, like, I don't know that much about, I know very little, about, I've read very little about Sterner. So, okay. um, but from that aspect, yes, because like the whole thing is that from an individual perspective is that you shouldn't be basing your, your existence doesn't depend on your race. It doesn't depend on your gender or whatever. Um, Cause that's part of it as well. And I, I it sounds like that's what Sterner's kind of getting at a little bit. Yes. No. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, Sterner was um, he yeah. was speaking more descriptively than prescriptively, so it yeah. wasn't you need to think about this. This is he was just saying, this is how it is. You know, it was yeah. the, the 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 concept of ought, the concept of right. 
-hmm. that these are not things that are definable outside of the individual essentially. And so right. mm -hmm. I would say like, from what I'm hearing you talk about you, it, it almost sounds slightly more, slightly less individualistic than egoism, but in the same mm -hmm. strain of thought. But then again, I mean, Stirner and Nietzsche were mm -hmm. basically contemporaries and Nietzsche was like, yeah. no, I didn't read him. So, I mean, I think that they're, they're probably yeah. quite close. They're probably, yeah. They're probably quite similar. And, and Nietzsche like kind of, um, I think has influenced a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. So Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you have to admit, like as a philo like if I were a philosopher and then I went into a time machine and went to the future, and mm -hmm. the first person that you think of when you say this person was inspired by me, I, I would not want it to be Adolf Hitler. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> Yeah, but I guess at some point it's like every uh, person like that has is inspired by somebody who's probably not completely insane. But <laughs> <laughs> so it sounded like you were talking and very passionately, Jessica, while you weren't on the screen. I um, <laughs> I became so angry by my Wi-Fi connection going out again that I uh, forgot entirely what I was talking about. <laughs> I rage blanked, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, yeah, no, I, I, I wasn't. Um, I, I, I want to understand basically why people have this fear perception. I guess mm -hmm. why the, why postmodernism became the target of the fearful perception. Mm -hmm. Well, can I can I say that for me when I was first introduced to the concept of postmodernism. Mm -hmm. Like I said early on, it was by stupid people. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to make me question whether or not the, ch the table in front of me was real mm -hmm. or how it functioned or whatever. And I was like, we could do this. Mm -hmm. We could talk about these different things that we all interact with and we all know about every day. Mm -hmm. But you're not actually convincing me of anything except that you don't believe in tables. So... It's, it's, it's like, I've, I've gone into some, I've gone into some other philosophies, like mo just very minimally. And it, every time I get to there, I can't, I can't name the ones, but I've gotten to several where I'm just like, you're just saying things don't exist. Yeah. Or, you know, like you're it, pl pl uh, Plato mm -hmm. in the cave, you know, the, the ideal, all of these things. It's like, you're really questioning whether or not these things exist or you're saying they do exist on another plane. And this is just a facade of that ideal. And yeah. it's like, yeah, <laughs> like I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue that like things don't exist, but I think like your perceived reality of them can vary. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe this is where I lose y'all, but <laughs> No. <laughs> continue with that. I think that's true, though. But like, like you have, so say you have like a wall behind you. Okay, so it used to be we used to think it was just like a hard thing, and then we learned eventually about atomic theory, right? Mm -hmm. um, but also, okay, so that wall is there, and this is where relativism comes in. But like, if you actually ask somebody, like, okay, what would your like from one to ten? What is your perceived like like hardness of the? This is going to sound really dumb, but like hardness of the wall or something like that. You know what I mean? Like like that's yeah. going to vary, and that's where like relativism kind of comes in. From like I'm convinced that like that my walls are made out of American cheese yeah. because I can't hang anything <laughs> well, from go. them without them without it falling down. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's interesting to me is because and I was going to say this earlier mm -hmm. because it sounds like what people are hearing postmodernism as are truth claims when mm -hmm. really it's an epistemological um, query. It's saying, how yeah. do we know? Yeah. Rather than making a claim on what we know. Is that okay, that's, true? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I would say yes. Um, and I think I I for this. me, when I was um, very against it, I, I pretty much was still like a conservative or whatever. Um, and I think a lot of like the negative feedback kind of came from people just wanting to blame something and, and point at it because, you know, we live in a postmodern world or whatever. Um, <laughs> Let me just say, um, or, real and, like, quick. 
sometimes also have like a really weird idea of like what postmodernism means where they'll just kind of label like, okay, you're weird. That's postmodernism. Like I've seen it on Twitter right. all over the place. It's like, that's well, not necessarily what it is. Go ahead. The Dada I mean, artists no, didn't so help. Guess, <laughs> what? I yeah. said the Dada artists didn't help with that. Yeah. Um, but. Which I'm a huge fan of Dada, so. <laughs> but um, I also love, I, I think hierarchies are a, a good thing. I think mm -hmm. that they enable our survival, which I tried to go at length to kind of like make my stand on that. So I won't go into it too much more, but like there's room for, there's room for both. Uh, two mm -hmm. wildly divergent philosophies can exist in the same mind without much yeah. conflict to be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think it's, it's good for me to understand that it's a more of an epistem epistemological mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah. It's more about yeah. how do we know? Because I mean, I will still argue with people who answer mm -hmm. in certain ways, but I understand it as a try a grasping at the world and trying to fi figure it out and ha find out how we know Like that makes more sense to me yeah. than just, you know, and also, oh, I was going to say, I, agree. I think that probably one of the single, the fatal mistake in the naming of postmodernism mm -hmm. is that when you put post in front of something and then try to describe yeah. yourself, it's, it's describing in, um, uh, against something. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for as a po it's opposing something. Mm -hmm. And so there's no definition. There's no surefire definition in that. And yeah. so truly when you ask someone what is postmodernism you could ask a number of people and they could all answer and technically mm -hmm. be right yeah and so like post right po and I, I love ted i'm not yeah loving him but you know i was about to say sort of like post right <laughs> yeah post libertarian post yeah. post hardcore post punk all of these things don't actually describe anything except that what by what they're not and so right. I feel like that's yeah. really shoddy titling of things. I mean, it, yeah. like what Tet does is a different thing. It's almost, it is and it isn't satire. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I appreciate that. But it's like when you're being a very serious academic and you just call it post blah, 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 you're mm -hmm. not saying anything. And that, that will confuse people. Yeah. I think without a shadow of a doubt. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, uh, the way that information gets disseminated is a problem here too, because you have like think pieces that these websites pay people 50 bucks a pop to write. Mm -hmm. And then they'll take an academic theory, which is quite complicated and ha they haven't read Foucault. I haven't read Foucault. Uh, I, I barely know how to pronounce that dude's name. And as you say, he's very difficult to sort of like access mentally. Yeah. So that information gets disseminated as like this, uh, I don't know, agenda driven. Well, and politically. If you want to know how bad this is, think of anything that you know, that you know that you know, something you've studied, something you love, something you've spent time at, then search for it and find a corporate press article about it mm -hmm. and point out everything they got wrong. Yeah. Because I'm sure that happens with postmodernism because mm -hmm. I know. I was uh, reading something about, you know, I have a degree in biblical studies. That's what I do. Yeah. You know, I, I've, I've, I've spent time in this and then I've read articles on different things and I'm like, did you, did you freaking read it? Yeah. Because that is not <laughs> there. Yeah. That is, this is, this is bad. This is. Yeah. And so I, 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 <laughs> I have to assume that with postmodernism that comes as well. And so, I mean, you have to, mm. uh, what's, <laughs> There's a word like in French for that to, to these ideas because you're probably getting the worst and most dumbed down version. You're getting the 19, 20 year old in intro to philosophy telling you that the fucking table doesn't exist. Yeah. And that's not yeah. the person you should be listening to. But I yeah. do think that probably another one of postmodernism's issues is that it is like Derrida or Derrida. How do you say it? Derrida. Derrida. Oh. Yeah. Maybe French or something. Um, French. <laughs> a lot of the main ones are French. Yes. But there's, there's a, a barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. And so yes. you're always in, in a, in a lot of ways, regardless, like I hope you talking to us 
you feel comfortable because we're just like curious and we're not here to fight you on things. Yeah, like, no, no negativity. Here, I'm just man. hoping I, that I literally just sound coherent. Like I you just, do. No, you do. <laughs> Actually, you've made me think about this a lot. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Cam. I totally interrupted you. I have no idea what I was going to say now. I'm so Once sorry. Once that happens, <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. ADHD brain at work. Yeah, well, um, I mean, yeah, you said you were talking about barriers to entry, and like Derry Dot yes. is very hard to read. He's he's not. Um, you would probably be better off just like getting like from him, just getting somebody to um, talk about like a synopsis of what he said. Right. Well, and and, that, and but that's the, yeah. that's the problem. Like you know, the, yeah. like she said, there's a tr there's a transmission error here mm -hmm. because yeah. there are things in. I wouldn't say that. I would say probably postmodernism is not esoteric. But yeah. due to the mountains of homework you have to do, it becomes esoteric. And so yeah. that's, yes. that makes it very difficult. So it's like, for me, when I heard people talking about it, I read the bullet points and I was like, eh, not really my, my thing. Mm -hmm. Let me move on. But I never would have, like, I've, I've heard and I've thought, maybe I should read Foucault. Maybe I mm -hmm. should do this. And I'm just like, I don't want to yeah. well <laughs> and, and so, i will say too like i will also give you that like i think um if you actually the amount that you have to read to what you get back from it probably isn't worth it yeah. i would say you know <laughs> and and you know i only i was just interested in it so like that's why i went and read it like otherwise i right. probably would not have gotten into it you know what's um, what's that book because you know we have a lot of friends who are into economics for some nerdy reason but is it man economy in, in state yes. that's like 1500 pages long or something? Yes. Yeah. Well, another one I will say is that like, I've seen people, especially like Mises people be like, Oh, go human read action. this human action. And I'm like, dude, I put that down after a freaking chapter because like that shit is boring yeah. <laughs> and it's long. And Mises is not easy to understand either. So like if you're telling a not libertarian, okay, maybe if you're a libertarian, you're interested in it, you might go and read it. Right. But if you're telling a not libertarian to go and read this, that that's not a good idea at all. No, like, it's not. That's going to turn them off immediately. It's like it's, I think you made great do points, but like get get the bullet points, bro. Like that's well, that's why. Like, like if you want someone to get into that, first off, I have little to no interest in economics. Yeah. Except for how it affects me. Right. Um, but that's why it's good that there are people like um, I'm sure Thaddeus Russell does a good job with postmodernism. Mm -hmm. um, but it's good. It's like, uh, what's the the book by Rothbard that um, Bob Murphy turned into the book choice where he was just like, this is it. This is that book, but for idiots. But isn't that man economy and state? I think, I think that it is. might be. I, I think it might be. I'm not 100 on that though. I haven't read that either. I don't okay. So economy. I posted on Twitter. Thank you. I posted on Twitter that, um, Man economy and state was too big a bite for me to chew. And Gene Epstein said to read choice instead. Yeah. So at least from Gene Epstein, that's the ratio. Yeah. I like him a lot. Gene's cool. Yeah. Gene's nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice enough to come talk to the little people. So. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was 18, I worked as a guy who put security systems into new homes and existing homes. Mm -hmm. And one day I was on the job and I was um, drilling into the ceilings to put these little speakers in and stuff. Mm -hmm. And as I was doing this, there was this one guy named George that worked with us. And George, very nice guy, kind person, wonderful person to talk to, total idiot. George, <laughs> I was like, you're building George up for a fall here. I could feel it. <laughs> George was up in the rafters and he had his, his uh, staple gun and he was supposed to walk across the rafters and staple the, the lines in so they don't move. Easy enough. You keep your, you, you stay on the rafters. This dude, we're sitting there, me and the boss are sitting there working on these things down at the bottom and we hear boom, boom, and George's leg pops through the roof. And we're like, George, are you okay? That's, that was my reaction. And uh, the, the boss was just screaming and cussing. You did it again, George. Why do you keep doing this, George? If you do this one more time, I'm going to fire you. And I was like, okay, this is, this is not good for George, but this is, this is hilarious. It can't get any funnier. <laughs> I was wrong. Not 20 minutes later, 
after George gets reamed out, he goes and he he has a drink. He goes back up to get going. We're working. Another foot through another part of the roof. And Jenny, I've never heard, I never heard my boss yell that loud in my life because he didn't yell, George, are you okay? George, I can't believe you did it again. He, he yelled, George, get in your car and get the fuck out of here. You're done. And poor George looks, he, he walked down. He was just like, oh no. Like, uh, what's that character? Because that's who, he, oh no. Oh, he was like, know. what's the, the of, of mice and men? Lenny. He was essentially Lenny. Lenny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, oh no, poor so George. I, I said I would tell you about, I know that your husband stepped through the roof, but I was like, I have, I know George. He stepped through, <laughs> I asked my boss afterwards, guess how many times he had done that? That was know, his half. 14th time. Oh, shit. That's <laughs> way higher than I thought. <laughs> I was like half he a dozen. Was, oh. <laughs> he was so nice though that that the boss was just I'm we can get it fixed. We'll just get we'll get some some drywall in here. We'll fix it up. That'll be fine. But the 14th time he was like, "Nope, you're gone." And then what was funny though is the boss was such a softy that even though he fired him that day, 2 weeks later he was back working again. <laughs> Being nice pays off. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry for that intermission. But <laughs> I just had to tell you about George. There was something I told you that I needed to, to talk about, Jessica. Do you remember what it was? Oh, Lord. No. We did this. I took a, I was in a class right before we went live. So okay. everything that was in my brain before the class got like shoved out of the way so, as I took so in new information. Since, since I can't remember what that was, um, Allie, what would you say – despite all of the reading and all of you've done, what has been the most beneficial part of postmodernism when it's come to your thinking, your life, et cetera? Like, how has it affected you? I think for me, it's just like the way I see the world now um, in terms of like actually um, being flat. No, <laughs> <laughs> but just like, like with going back to the whole questioning, everything, don't take everything for face value. And then just looking at like everybody's perspective is going to be different depending on who you are and that type of thing. Um, if that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, no, that does. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, I think we all yeah. have had, at least in our mine and Jessica, especially yeah. you, our circles, there's been that, moment where we started questioning things mm -hmm. like and they these yeah. crystallizing moments are all very different for different people um i don't know if yours was postmodernism, and that's what led to the rest of your the way you think or was it something else that shifted things or was that kind of the the linchpin well okay so i have kind of a complicated history but like i was a conservative for a long time and then i got into libertarianism because of dave smith which is hilarious because now there are so many things that he says that i'm like bro no <laughs> you know um King of the i nerds. do know yeah i do but know i heard him on a podcast that was actually a comedian podcast um where he does like a libertarian thing once a year i think it was like ari shafir's, ari shafir's show yeah. Yeah, yeah, him. Um, and that kind of was my transition. And then I became an anarchist because it's like I can't justify anymore. Um, minarchism basically is like taking the worst parts of the state and propping them up. <laughs> to me anyway. So it's like, no. yeah, I, I can't justify that. Um, yeah. And then ANCAPs and ANCOMs are insufferable. So I'm like, I'm getting away from them. <laughs> I'm not saying I get that. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and post uh, postmodernism was really just in, I guess, the last year, year and a half. Okay. So, just getting into that. But, yeah. Um, so, about the, around the same time that I started interacting with you, probably. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Because that's been well, always my thoughts of you have been tied to that. So Yeah. <laughs> what, I, what I've always appreciated about you is that every time there's a thing... And there's mm -hmm. always a thing. They put one out. I don't know who is doing it, but somehow there's a thing like every day. Mm -hmm. And your takes on them are always something that I had not completely thought of before. Even if I don't agree with them, mm -hmm. they're, they're a disagreement in a way I haven't thought about disagreeing before. 
was like, you know, I don't think I disagree with it, but I haven't thought of it that way before. And so I think that I attribute, I I attribute that quality of postmodernism through you. I attribute that quality to Mm postmodernism where I say, okay, obviously like you don't know what you don't know. So Mm -hmm. there are perspectives that I've never considered before that have to be presented to me before I can even consider them. I'm not Mm going to just come up with them. We can't all just come up with all the philosophies (laughs) on our own. No. (laughs) It'd be time consuming. (laughs) No shit to do. And there's there's so many philosophies that are springing up right now Mm -hmm. on – uh, it's this is a Twitter conversation. Let's be we're talking about Twitter. Yeah, we're not we talking about real life. We're not talking about it, it, this is all Twitter. Mm. It's all because no one talks about postmodernism at the gas station. Like, it's not no, for, I mean, nobody, right. most people in everyday life don't care about it. No, right. I, I am free to admit that. Like, I will admit right. that 100%. <laughs> I will say though that at least p- postmodernism has a um, academic history. Mm-hmm. Yes. Whereas, you know, there are some new ideas that are going around, some that are just repackaged ideas that people are calling new. There's a lot of stuff that you like I, I tweeted the other day. Um, what's the cool label now? What do, what do I have to call myself to be cool now? And it's like oh, yeah. it gets it gets old. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, well, and, and so much of it is just them repeating what mm-hmm. someone else has already said and is well established. But they're calling it. It gets boring to me. Yeah. Um, but philosophy is important. Uh, we're going to have um, next month, we're going to have my friend Kim on, and she's been doing a deep dive into stoicism. Okay. There's some There's some really, like, I, I don't know much about stoicism, so I'm mm-hmm. interested to find out, just like I was for postmodernism. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was this, there was a couple of things that came up that I've seen, all of a sudden I'm seeing stoicism stuff, and I'm like, Mar- Marcus Aurelius has been dead for how mm-hmm. long but i i really appreciate even though you know postmodernism is much younger than stoicism mm-hmm. yeah. or christianity or um any uh, buddhism i don't know what else to I mean, i'm not, i'm not saying it's a religion um but you know it's it's older than these philo- philosophies because i am i'm describing ph- philosophies of diff- varying measures um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but i can appreciate that postmodernism has an academic history. Mm-hmm. Whereas yeah. there's a lot of stuff right now that these people sound so dumb and say so many dumb things and make broad and huge assumptions about everyone. I saw someone the other day say that saying you don't hate taxation. You just want to make more money. Yeah. And I'm like, of course I want to make more money. But I'm also not here because I, I also I hate taxation because I don't want my money mm-hmm. to bomb people. Yeah, I mean that's the thing too about a lot of people who were like, "Oh, stop!" Maybe maybe they just didn't come across right. But when they're like, "Stop being poor, just be rich enough to not care," it's like, "Yeah, but your taxation is still going to things that you don't agree right. with, and, and you're funding those, so right. it's still and a problem." So- I will also like go out of my way to say that like I think saying stop being poor is not an all acknowledging that people have different situations Mm -hmm. that put them there like it's not as simple as like just make more money right yeah. If that's what you were getting at, that's what I'm saying. That's all. Yeah. Well, I have when always the, said that if they're building parks and schools and roads and that's all they did with the taxation, yeah. I probably wouldn't even be an anarchist. But they yeah. pay for the wars with them. But if they didn't right. do that, would I be one? I don't know. I don't think yeah. so. Probably the, not. The assumption is that people are mad because they got a paycheck and a certain percentage of it was gone and they've been mad about it ever since. Yeah. I had plenty. I was mad when I first saw my paychecks. Who the hell is FICA? Right. But I was still arguing at that point in my dumb life that, you know, we have to have the, the, the military, the roads, blah, blah, blah. It didn't hit me until someone, Dr. Paul, Mm-hmm. struck me in my it struck me at the moral level to said yeah. this is something that's going on and this is wrong this is violence this is mm-hmm. bad and then that switched in my head and so i don't care what these little nerds go out and say i really mm-hmm. don't but 
I also do not appreciate anyone telling me what my motivations are. And so yeah. postmodernism tells me that this is my truth and you're a idiot for telling me that your truth yeah. is objectively right. Yes. So mm -hmm. Shove it up your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Yeah. So do I understand postmodernism better now? <laughs> I think, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Uh, so I'm so irritated. Like it, r recently, and I know it's been for Jessica as well, is I am so bored by all of the things that I've been talking about for the past yeah. few years. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not only am I bored, but I came to the realization, and this was very personal realization because it was a little bit more than the way I'll present it here to make it easy. Mm -hmm. Um, but I realized how much time I had wasted mm -hmm. and how I had centered the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've been talking about recently, and I've spoken with it, I think most, I've, we've spoken about it at length, um, is the problem with most people and why I get so frustrated mm -hmm. is because anarchist, libertarian, leftist, rightist, whatever, all of these are things that center the state in your life in some way. Mm -hmm. They center, uh, for a lot of people, it's central to their identity, being opposed to the state or being for the state. Yeah. And I'm sitting here and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm done. I don't, it doesn't matter. The only yeah. thing that matters is how I conduct myself, how I can subvert it if I can, how I can get yeah. around it, and how I can live my life as freely and as happily as possible that yeah. is what is important and so i'm sitting here and i'm so frustrated with twitter and libertarianism mm -hmm. and all of this stuff and i'm just and what's great is i know that i can just throw shade and jessica and you will both be like no i feel you bro <laughs> Some people are really unrealistic because it's like, okay, you have a family and you have a wife and that type of thing. It's like people don't want to die in jail, like uh, whatever Peter Schiff's dad's name is. Like, yeah, from not, yeah. Yeah. Like, Schiff, yeah. Yeah. Schiff, yeah. Like, I don't know. You have to be realistic on some level. Yeah. Well, and I feel like a lot of people aren't. Like, it's just yeah. like, you know, you do what you can to minimize it. But at the same time, it's like, if you're in jail, you're not in a position to like carry on a message or like whatever you're trying to do. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> well, and it's like in the, in the Christian sphere of things, people always talk mm -hmm. about that verse that says, give to Caesar. What is Caesar? Give to God's what is God's mm -hmm. right. And they always say, this is making it so that taxation is good or that you should, you should pay your taxes. Or they'll say that, no, it's saying the opposite, that you shouldn't pay your taxes and that everything's God's. There's these all these arguments when if you actually read what is said in that that verse, in that chapter, in that book, he is saying, don't get killed over stupid stuff. You yeah. have more important things to do. Yeah. And that is my outlook. I am not going to be thrown in jail for not paying taxes. Yeah. It's but not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> if I can find ways to have money that's not taxable that I can't get in trouble for, I'm going to maximize that. Yes. And so, so it's that's crazy yeah. to me. I think I've hit on something. I was thinking while you were talking, Cam, and about <laughs> anarchy specifically. Yeah. Um, no, not that I, I was thinking about what you were saying. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> that sounded like I was ignoring you and having my own thought process. That's not what I meant. Okay. So um, in regard to Romans 13 and, you know, we're not going to, you know, die over these taxes and so on and so forth. Anarchy is now. You're already in anarchy. Mm -hmm. You decide what you do, irrespective of the state. Now, the state may, in certain cases, influence you to do things because they'll kill you if you don't. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. But for, you know, you also have that choice. So, like, you're creating your own set of principles and realities and all of those kinds of things, which is, and from what I've been understanding of what Ali's been saying, a, a, a kind of... Uh, living out of postmodernism mm -hmm. that, you know, I was, I was in a conversation with Tet on Twitter, probably at least one account ago. And he was saying, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about Paul writing the letters to mm -hmm. writing the letters while he was in prison, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact. 
And, um, you know, it's not unthinkable that this guy who was in prison about to die for his beliefs was telling everybody, hey, you know, you don't need to run over and get killed for all of this. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, not everyone is a martyr. Like, yeah. you know, I, I think that there is well, important context that he might be telling the bros of this incredibly nascent religion. Like, if you all die, <laughs> we're not right. going to have a thing. So, right. so yeah. it's like, die, yeah. don't die stupidly. If you're don't going die to die, do it for the right reasons. Yeah. Do it the right now, way. The man who sells oranges on the side of the road is subverting the state. Mm -hmm. He's living anarchy. Um, mm -hmm. If you smoke a joint, you know, all of these things that are like pretty common everyday circumstances are anarchic. They're interactions we have that don't involve the state. Yeah. So anarchy is now. The kingdom of God is now. You know, like we're, yeah. you know, they're, they're concepts that we live out. I think I'm yeah. coming around to your way of thinking, Allie. <laughs> I think the longer I sit here and like reason through it, I'm like, you know, she's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the, but my, my point when it came to all of that is just, I think that there are a lot of people who are much less happy and fulfilled than they could be if they focus them, themselves, their lives, their thoughts on the right things. Mm -hmm. And I am not trying to crap on anyone. There are people that I would have already, there are people that we've, that have been mentioned in the show that I'd love to crap on right now, but I won't because <laughs> it's not the life I want to live. Yeah. Um, but I think that there's something about thinking on the good things, thinking on the important things, thinking on the things you can change, the things that you can control, the things you can actually do. And I feel like there are a lot of people who are very unhappy, and I was one of them. Mm -hmm. And breaking out of that mm -hmm. makes my life so much better. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, I see the things that happen. Yeah, I, I will comment on things that are evil or wrong or stupid. Mm -hmm. But there's there are more important conversations to have. Yeah. And so let me ask you, um, what is something in your life, whatever, around the world, whatever it is, that gives you hope, that makes you feel like there's something to live for? Because there are a lot of people still somehow without hope. And yeah. I'm curious, is there anything that, that drives you in that way besides Tet's biceps? <laughs> oh, but yeah, okay. Uh <laughs> that was the clean way. The brain said something completely but, like, different. I think a, lot, a lot of the relationships that I have in everyday life, like like I think drive me. Like my brother just had a new kid, a, a son, so I have a new nephew and all that kind of stuff. And like my family, I'm super, except for one brother who's a total douche nozzle. Outside of that, <laughs> I'm really close to them. So like, like seeing that kind of stuff, I think gives me hope. Um, and I don't see because I've I've had people unfollow me because they said I was black pilled or whatever. And like, I don't think that I necessarily am. Like I, I have opinions. I have strong opinions about certain things, especially when it comes to like education, because I was a teacher, which, you know, I think most people know, but um, yeah, like I don't try and live my life like as a miserable, like I can't change anything. You just accept what is in your life at this point and do what you can to, to um, you know, avoid the bad things, like especially like mm -hmm. when the state, that type of thing. Like I'm not going to be thrown in jail for something stupid. Yeah. Don't be thrown in jail for something stupid. No. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So whether it's like going to a farmer's market, which like you, first of all, you meet the people who are growing like your food or your spices or like whatever they have there, but you're also not getting taxed for that type of stuff. So like doing yeah. those types of things, I think you're good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, and I think that for the most part, whenever I've talked to someone who they've said people have called me black pilled. Yeah. Usually when you actually are black pilled, people don't tell you because they don't talk to you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's that's been my situation because I know black pilled people. I don't mm -hmm. talk to them anymore. Yeah. Um, I would say that typically that comes from a place of 
perception because mm -hmm. people who are heavily into political stuff, who are heavily into political parties are going to call you black pilled because mm -hmm. you don't believe that their fantasy politics league is going to win the game. Right. Right. And, yeah. and so there's, there's this like, so a lot of times, unless people just stop talking to you, I, I don't believe you're actually black pilled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Cause and I, I will. And a lot of that kind of came from, um, on Twitter basically because I had, it was when I was like, yeah, the LP fucking sucks because I was in it for a year. Not going to lie. I, oh, I wow. okay. yeah, I joined it for a year, 2019, uh, October, 2019. I joined, um, because that was when like the Mises caucus takeover was happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I realized what bullshit it was. And the fact that like, it is basically a popularity contest to be a delegate, because it's always the people that people know. And if you haven't been in it for that long, people aren't going to yeah. like vote for you or whatever. It's, it's just all bullshit. Um, and I think that that's kind of where a lot of that came from is that like, I was like, yeah, they're fucked too. Like, I don't care what caucus you're with. It's yeah. not happening. It's not going to happen. And it also might have to do with a little bit of, you know, me saying like, just burn it all down. I don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, um, you know, yeah, in state and that type of thing so yeah i think we all kind of go through that when we're yeah. disillusioned with the world around us and yeah. we see everything is kind of bullshit and we're like well burn it all down yeah and then after some time goes by you're like well i'm not gonna burn it down you yeah. know like <laughs> so you have to find a way to live in the world you know yeah. and whatever yeah. that is a philosophy a religion what, what have you you recognize yeah. that it's bullshit yeah, you know, and that's a a thing that makes that our, our sort of group of people I think come together is this sort of like a understanding, preternatural understanding that something is deeply wrong with the world. Mm -hmm. well, and go ahead. Can I? I was just going to say there there are things that give me hope. One mm -hmm. of them being that there are different levels of this is bullshit. I mm -hmm. want to burn this down, and it's really good that there's this. I, I could say decentralization. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what there was another, there's a better word, but I can't remember what it was. Um, but there, what's good about it is it's very easy to find the people who have gotten past the point where you're like cage stage, like you're in a cage and you're screaming at people yeah. and mm -hmm. you, you get to the place where you're like, there's more important stuff. There's good stuff mm -hmm. there here. We can do this. We can do that. And it's really nice that, somehow I've found a little group who is in the same area I am <laughs> mentally. And I mean, it, there's going to, there's differences of course, but there's that mental kind of, Oh, well we're in this place and this is a good place. Um, and another aspect of hope in my life is I told Josh Smith this the other day because I really like Josh Smith as a person. Yeah. He's I like him guy. too. Yeah. Um, but he is the only person I would have um, made an exception for in knowing the um, chairman of the LP's name. I don't know what it is, who's the, who it is now. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I'm in a place of freedom in that way. I don't know their names. And that's yeah. so beautiful because it, it does not matter to me mm -hmm. at all. And so that is one hope, one thing that's been hopeful of me is I've been able to do to them being just turds. I've been able to get to the place much quicker where I don't know something and it's a positive that I don't know it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know it. I'm happy. Yeah. Um, uh, what is your, if you were to order a pizza right now, Allie? <laughs> no pineapple. <laughs> Again, no, sorry. <laughs> what would you have on that pizza? What would I have in it? I mean, it depends on the night and where I'm ordering it from. But like, yeah, I mean, for the most part, no bacon or pepperoni. Uh, hmm. But outside, of, yeah, <laughs> which everybody's going to judge me on that one. But I mean, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably already know that. Um, but yeah, I like mostly like uh, a lot of like mushrooms, peppers, onions, like this, those types of things. But cheesesteak pizza is pretty good, too. And so is lasagna. Ooh, pizza. Yeah, so, yeah. Did you just just say like, lasagna pizza? Yes. I try that. We have a local place that does it <laughs> real good. I'm just saying in Nashville. So how does that work? 
Do they put noodles on it? No, no, no. It's like it. It's like the so it's like tomato, mm -hmm. right? Ricotta like sauce, and then it's ricotta and like yeah, like things like you would put on, on lasagna, like a bolognese. But sauce. on a, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. It's real okay. good. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because I'm like imagining noodles because they have mac and cheese pizza, they which do. seems like just oh, the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. That same place though. Well, I mean, if you're really drunk, it's actually great. So <laughs> let me back up. When I used to party in Philly, we would go to this place where we called gay pizza just because it was in the neighborhood. You know, <laughs> Philadelphia. Um, I don't yeah, know yeah. what the name was, but they would put a bunch of different like pastas on pizza and it tasted so good. Like, hmm when you're wasted. Anyway, <laughs> I would eat that. Not that I'm okay. recommending that. <laughs> I would destroy, so, I carb on carb, give me any carb on carb and I'm on so, it. Yeah. Okay, so I, I just, I have to, I have to fix it because you know what? It's not the dumbest one. The dumbest one was loaded potato soup pizza. See, I would eat that. I have never seen that and I hate That is carb on carb. <laughs> <laughs> I, would I want? But Jessica, what does this mean about Ellie? Okay, I came prepared cookie. for you this time. Yeah, so <laughs> one time I posted on Twitter that what a person orders on their pizza tells me everything I need to know about them. And so now every show since then, Cam has made me come up with something about a person based on their pizza order. So I have a plan for this. Um, I pulled up a... <laughs> I pulled up a um, astrology reading, and yeah. you're gonna get the astro the, just the very first astrology reading that I pulled up off of Google. <laughs> except for it's about your pizza. Came prepared for you this time, Cam. <laughs> says, this pizza is ruled by Uranus. <laughs> well, the planet. Says, I actually am an Aquarius, and that's like the same. Like, <laughs> oh, it, it happens to be planet. Aquarius because yeah. that's what that starts with A. So it came up yeah. first. Cool. So this pizza, this is the pizza that is governed by innovation, technology, and surprising events. This pizza perfectly mirrors uh, Allie's distinctive attitude, complementing the non-traditional nature of these visionary pizzas. <laughs> and I'm going to do that every time you do this from now on. <laughs> so that I don't have to come up with anything. Oh. So let me ask. Yeah. Allie. Yeah. Ruined it. What are you going to do now? On, you've <laughs> been on this show once before, and I left the planet. So let me ask you, That's right. have I been more thoughtful in this episode than in the last one? <laughs> well, considering the last one, you were like pretty much not coherent at all. <laughs> <laughs> Jess had to like pretty much like take the show, but you know, <laughs> and she doesn't know how. Yeah, but you can always just blame it on Ted anyway because he's the one who sent you. You know, <laughs> yeah, the edibles. He he did drug you. Ted drugged you. That's fair. <laughs> it's his fault. There you go. He's not here. He can't. He can't complain about it. <laughs> can I just say the biggest memory from that episode was Ted's laugh which may yeah. be the funniest thing. And it, it, it was, I, I appreciated the hell out of that. Yeah. Um, because I, because two things came out of that episode that I remember. One was that I thought that was hilarious. And two, wow. I randomly told the story. I believe it was that episode about going into the crematory after my dad died. Mm -hmm. And that's what gave me the idea for next week's episode which we're talking to uh, a, a girl named Kate Cheryl mm -hmm. who runs a website and she has Patreon and all that called Bur burials and beyond. So we're talking to her next week. Oh, that'll and be we're really gonna talk about death. Yeah. We're going to talk about death mm -hmm. and uh, different things like that. And I just, it was so funny because I, I had that idea because in the middle of that episode, I was like, Hey, let me tell you about that time. My dad died. <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's I'm excited about truth though. Truth in that moment. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about though because I mean she she's very interested in the death stuff and she's looked into cemeteries. She actually, um, I think this week, um, she just finished up her PhD on 19th century Gothic literature. Oh, yeah. oh, I've been and lying so, about her. <laughs> yeah. So I, oh yeah. I will. I, I wasn't sure. I did some digging. Like. To today about I what thought she was about. 
I thought she majored in mortuary studies, and I've been going around no. telling people, apparently you have to get a four-year degree in mortuary studies. You do. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, guys. Just, you know, take me with a grain of salt. <laughs> so you do. You do have to get a degree. You don't have to get a PhD or anything like oh. that. Um, okay. But um, Well, four-year, not, you know. Yeah. Yeah, just a regular years. undergraduate degree. Um, right. But... I, I was looking for a mortician and I'd still like to speak to one because that's some hands-on stuff that I find fascinating. Yeah. Um, but right. when I was looking for that, she, I, she came up and she's interested in all of this historical, you know, cemeteries, cathedrals, death across the, the millennia. Like that's fascinating in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really excited to talk to her because I think it, I think it could go just about anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, sorry for just randomly making it like a, no, that's fine. That sounds week. like super interesting because I, I love all that stuff. Like I'm not on Instagram anymore, but when I was like two people, I really loved that. I followed was Lindsay Fitzharris who has, I don't know if you know who she is. Mm -hmm. Um, she's written a book about Joseph Lister. If you know anything about him. Okay. Um, and she's working, I believe, I don't think she's released it yet, but she has been working on a history of like, um, civil war, like surgeon stuff, like uh, cosmetic surgery stuff. Oh, um, Cause she's a medical historian. So she's really interesting. And then oh. there's the other person that I really love that I miss being on Twitter for, I mean, not Twitter, miss being on Instagram for was a pathology assistant um, mm. who would post all kinds of things about like to do like funeral Friday or like post. Okay. You have to have the stomach for some of the pictures that she would post <laughs> yeah. um, because it was a little gross, but like she would just like, explain like other, all this types of stuff. Um, and like even had posted things about different like times of spontaneous abortions. And this is what it looks like at this week old or whatever. Um, yeah. And she was uh, Mrs. Ann Jemmy, I think was a person. Um, she was, a, and I really liked her too because she was from South Jersey. So, you know, um, <laughs> Damn Yankees. But her accent is like my, I don't sound anything like that, but her accent is very reminiscent of like South Philly, South Jersey. <laughs> um, so it makes me feel a little at home when I when I used to listen to her, but um, I she's really interesting too. But you, like I said, Obscura you know, is where we live, so I'm like taking names because I yeah. want these as future guests for our show. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. joke. Well, it's like we we have yeah. some cool stuff coming up. Like I, October is going to be really exciting. I think. Yeah. Um, but in, you know, in the upcoming weeks, we have we got spooky um, stuff coming up. You guys, nice, yeah. real spooky <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like after Kate, we have um, you know, caller fan Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he. We were having a conversation, and he was talking about essentially his hatred for psychiatry mm -hmm. and how he thinks it's kind of a spook. It's bad, and that's the first person who wasn't a Scientologist that I've heard say that. Yeah. And I was like, I want to talk about this. Because he's like he worked in like a psych ward and he's seen all he's seen all these different things. And I'm like, this is interesting. Um yeah. and then after that we have um Har Harley coming on. Mm -hmm. She's on I think Twitter's it's Rebel yeah, Scum Han. Yeah. And we're just gonna talk about cryptids. Yeah. And different creatures that may or may not exist. Um, mm -hmm. but then the 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 one after that is actually a guy named Chris Baker. And he is out of Chicago and he is a tattoo artist. But what he does is his entire thing, he's moved it from being his business. I think he probably does some stuff for business and for fun as well. But what he does is for free, he will cover up or remove tattoos from women who were sold into sex trafficking. So they'll have barcodes. And stuff yeah. like that, and tattoos, and he will get rid of those for free. He'll also get rid of like gang tattoos and you know swastikas and stuff or stuff yeah, that you don't want. Like, like, like yeah, yeah. yeah. And he'll do he does that for free, and that's what that's he does. Awesome. Now. Yeah, and that's fascinating to me. So I mean, I'm I, we have some some stuff that is off the beaten path for mm -hmm. what we've done on the show in the past. I'm so yeah. excited about it because I think it's so much more interesting. I feel like talking yeah. about postmodernism when I don't understand it and coming to my my understanding coming out of this mm -hmm. is that it is a question of how do we know, and that yeah. makes it make a lot more sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes a vastly more. Well, and I, I will say, like, I think like most people who are like the loudest about anything are usually the most obnoxious. Yeah, I was gonna say that, especially yeah. like this week on Twitter about like atheism versus like Christianity or whatever. Like, I 
I don't care. Just like stop being an asshole. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Like you to you and stop being a jerk. <laughs> like, yep. I saw some tweet. I can't remember who it was, but she uh, she was like, you know, atheism and Christianity have been hijacked and it's all about wokeness now. And so we need to find a different vehicle to spread personal responsibility. And I was like, I can't imagine something more offensive than just viewing Christianity or atheism as mm -hmm. a means to spread libertarianism. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> well, you know, it's Twitter is not populated by carefully thought out people and their thought right. process has been truncated to 280 characters. I mean, but like, for example, I posted about my, my pro-life story the other mm -hmm. day. Yes, Allie, I mean, you're like, hey, what about this? And I clarified and we managed to come to an understanding yeah. in like, you know, 400 and however many characters. Yeah, like, this is <laughs> this is easy if you if you can communicate from an honest place where you're not aggressive at the outset. Mm -hmm. And with the understanding of postmodernism, it's very hard to get people who aren't aggressive at the outset, either for yeah. or against. And so I appreciate you being willing to come and talk about a topic that does arouse suspicion mm -hmm. and makes people automatically, you know, dismissive of, you know, your intention. Yeah. So that's, you know, it, these days it's bravery to mm -hmm. talk about a thing that's not going to be received popularly. Yeah. So I appreciate that. And then I like that. Um, you make me question myself. And that's maybe the goal, I think, it, from my understanding so far, of the goal of postmodernism is at least to, to question why we believe the things that we believe. Yeah. That's a really fair thing to do. Mm -hmm. And anything you take in should have some modicum of skepticism to it, yeah. even deeply held scientific truths. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, from the bottom of my heart, I genuinely got something out of this and um, appreciated. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. I think yeah. that you did a really good job of bringing it down to my level. <laughs> and, <laughs> very embarrassed as I say that, but <laughs> right. I mean, thank you. Not everybody's going to know everything, right? Yeah. And you're going to be interested in different things than other people are. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's a hierarchy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Time preference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's, and that's what's so funny is what I like about what we've been doing and how Jessica and I work is like in this episode, I don't know much about um, postmodernism, mm -hmm. but like I'm up here like, what about this thing up here? Is it tied to this? And she's like, no, 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 just tell me. The, tell me why people are scared of it. And I'm like, this, mm -hmm. these are two levels that are happening simultaneously. And yeah. I love that you were at both of them. Okay. That's great. That's All right. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad that's the way came across. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm like the smartest person in the world. Don't, yeah. don't hear that. I'm just saying. No, I guess. Like, I, yeah. Sometimes I know that like I get on things and like, they don't always make sense to other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, so like, it's yeah, nice to know that, okay, it makes some sort of sense. <laughs> right. No, it well, does. And that's the yeah. thing. Like, sometimes I don't always pick the right words to like throw out there and, you know. <laughs> that's one good thing we're good about is clarification. Because if mm -hmm. I don't understand what you're saying, I'm going to say, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pretend I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Tell me what you're saying. Um, I can't remember. In that last episode, was I lucid enough at the end to ask you my on-the-spot questions? No. I, I had to tell that. you to hit the button. <laughs> yeah, you were not there, dude. You were comatose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you the on-the-spot questions. Oh, God. Okay. And, um, and then after that, I'll, I'll tell people where to find you, where to find, what we're, we're up to, and yeah. all that. I don't have to talk about the next episodes because I worked it in. Yeah. I worked that shit in. Brought it up, but <laughs> first on the spot question oh, is what hmm. is your favorite thing about Jessica? About can you repeat that? I'm sorry, my dog just decided she wanted to <laughs> <laughs> you just go on to the next question. Yeah. No, that's fine, I'll repeat it. I said, Oh, <laughs> what's your favorite thing about Jessica? My favorite thing about Jessica, I, I like <laughs> question embarrasses me oh, every no. time. Why? No, I don't know. I just like, yeah. Like, I mean, in, in the podcast episode and that thing, like, I think you're really good at asking questions without coming across as smug, if that makes sense. Oh, like, good. Cool. 
Like I'm judging you right now by the, cause sometimes you listen to like interviews and you're like, yeah, this person is obviously coming from a bad place. And like, I don't think you're like that at all. So I will say yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. I, yeah. um, I want people to be who they are and they are not me. Yeah. And they have the right to be themselves. And oh, I had this again with Tet. I had a great conversation <laughs> saying that um, he doesn't desire to free people from their chains. Mm -hmm. And I added, you haven't the right to free them from their chains. Like, yeah. they, you know, like, um, I don't know. I just, I really want people to be who they are. And I'm interested in who that is. I'm not interested in making you into me. Yeah. And um, yeah. that's what I appreciate about people who are different from me. Like, mm -hmm. Ali, you are so different from me, but I enjoy your perspective so much. Like, mm -hmm. I get a lot out of following you on Twitter. So everybody follow Ali because you're going to get something <laughs> out of it. And if you're like, oh, I have to unfollow her because she's blackpilled, you are a bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cam said retard at the beginning of the episode. So I'm going to say bitch now. If you can't handle Allie, you're a bitch. If and you can't you handle get over Allie yourself. at her retard, then you won't be able to handle her at her bitch. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um. Should that be a t-shirt? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just going to say, I appreciate that feedback for Jessica because that's what we're going for. Yeah. Because I like that's that's I think that's why the partnership works in a lot of ways yeah. is because I want to have conversations in order mm -hmm. to have conversations. You have to build rapport and in order to build rapport, you have to be, you know, and then that's kind of what I hope I'm good at, you know? Yeah. And so it's, it makes a lot of sense that you would do that. Follow up on the spot question. Okay. Don't say my beard. What's your favorite thing about me? Don't say my beard. Don't like, <laughs> but I mean, it's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> it has white in it. I always like pointing that out. You see this little white, little white patch that's okay i mean i'm a beer it. respecter no matter what I love it. <laughs> well, no i love it i can't wait i hope this means the rest of it will go that way yeah yeah, yeah. i skip gray and just go <laughs> santa claus i'm there yeah <laughs> um but in general i guess i would say is like i think you're a really straightforward and i like that like on here but also like on twitter because like I know I've seen you say some things that like could probably rustle some feathers, even if they haven't. And like, I respect people who do that because, <laughs> you know, stop trying to be nice to everybody. Like sometimes people yeah. need to be knocked down a peg or two. I'm just yeah. saying. I, I will like say. Tet actually, like, <laughs> like I would never say that. I would never uh, do that in my car. <laughs> you know, <if> it, like, <laughs> right. <laughs> I like to think that I'm a consistent person across <laughs> mediums. Yes. And so like, that's, that's what I, I shoot for. True. I'm not, I don't, I don't do a lot of, I'm not going to play a character. I'm just, if I'm dumb, I'm going to let you know right then and there. I'm yeah. <laughs> dumb on this. Yeah. I'm asking. Um, but I'm. Well, I'm and I dumb. think too, like too many people on Twitter, especially like aren't willing to say, you know what? I don't know about this. They just want to have an opinion and shout to whoever was going to listen. And it's like, yeah, well, you're just making people realize how dumb you are. Yeah. <laughs> by having well, like, something you don't know about. <laughs> I tweeted like a couple months ago. I said, you don't have to have an opinion on mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. And I blocked one person who responded in the most banal way mm -hmm. because she said, well, anything you know about, you're going to have an opinion or opinion on. And I was like, okay, Deborah, do you, do you know everything? <laughs> because I sure as shit don't No. And then I was like, uh, block. Cause I can't, I, I can't deal with that because yeah. you know what she was doing. You, you know what she was going for. And I'm just like, yeah. you're not my people. It's okay yeah. for you not to read my tweets. And right now I'm, I'm locked and it's so weird because I'm like, I, I, I swear to God, I've had some bangers. Of course me and Ted are always like that. We, we swear to God, these are bangers. <laughs> Yeah, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it was I, I've had some and I was just like, damn, if if I wasn't if I wasn't padlocked right now, this shit would be going out. And I'm like I always know when Cam thinks he has a banger that's not getting enough respect because he'll DM it to me. Like <laughs> Is it this good? I'm like, yeah, some right. of them are good, <laughs> I swear to God. <sighs> I forget there I I think my favorite tweet. I don't get no respect. Yeah. My favorite tweet well, I will was say, when... though, I think sometimes with Twitter, too, it has to do with the algorithm. So, like, there are, like, I probably see the same, like, 10 to 15 people most of the time. Yeah. Like, if you're on there, like, all day, which most of the time I'm not, believe it or not, because um, some people swear I am, but I'm not <laughs> on there all day. But, like, 
you know, you see the people you interact with the most or whatever. Mm -hmm. So some people just might not be seeing like what you're putting out there. Yeah. Well, and, and it's my favorite one was uh, a few months ago, there was a bad case of joke policing going mm -hmm. on. And my favorite tweet probably of, of all time was I tweeted, I'm, I'm worried that some of you are going to come to my joke house, kick down my joke door and shoot my joke dog. <laughs> And I, that is good. I can't help you if you don't think it is because I was That's just, <laughs> no love on that one. I swear to God, it was good. Oh, yeah. No, that's a good one. <laughs> um, but let me say, since you had to answer those questions, I will say on Twitter, I appreciate the bluntness mm -hmm. because I am a natural diplomat. Mm -hmm. And so even though I will go blunt, it takes a, a good bit of pissed offness to get there. Yeah. Because a lot of times I'm not trying, I like, I don't always want to ruffle feathers, but I, well, I do always want to ruffle feathers, mm -hmm. but I try not to because, you know, there's this little bit that I have to live within in order to move in the direction I want to move. And it sucks. Yeah. yeah. Because there's some time that I can't tell you, I know there was one person who was, who had my notifications had notifications on for me and I, I would just get messages every now and then like why'd you delete that and I'm like because it was it would have killed me it would have yeah. killed everything I'm working for and he's like it's so good though and I'm like I know it was I know it was <laughs> but I appreciate the fact that whatever you see on Twitter you just state it you yeah. say what you think you state your opposition you're not afraid to, to go against it that's fantastic I love during this episode, um, the humility mm -hmm. in speaking about this subject, mm -hmm. because most people don't function out of humility. Mm -hmm. The best thing I ever learned from any philosophy class was from Socrates, which is all that I know is that I know nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so for yeah. me, that's always been kind of my rubric, I think, about that before I start talking, because I don't, I, I will tell you what I'm certain of, but I'm not going to take it from a place of I, you're right now. I'm right and you're wrong, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And so yeah. through this conversation, you dealt with it with humility and the ability to say I might be wrong. And that mm -hmm. is loads better than a lot of people who will talk on any subject. Yeah. So I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> um, I think, I mean, especially if you're coming from a postmodern perspective, I mean, you, you should be that way. Okay. Where it's like, mm -hmm. you know what? I might be wrong. You might be right. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> Most people don't function that way, and it's insane to me. Mm -hmm. It's insane to me. Um, but yeah. with that, I will I will let you go, and I'll read all the the fun stuff that's coming up. Or actually, nothing to come up. Um, yeah, but you already ask, talked about all of it. You worked ask, it. Is there, <laughs> is there anything that you would want to share with the audience about, it can be about postmodernism, about life, whatever, anything you just want to leave them with, like a little nugget of wisdom? That you final may note have. final note um i mean i don't have anything off the top of my head but i will um just say because i know tet and i will be there for the end the wars thing in dc that i think magnus is putting oh, together nice. i will if they don't that, you can rsvp to it if you want to come to dc and if you want to do something locally you can also um ask them and they'll send you like signs and stuff to help you put that together locally so yeah okay so good to know I'll we'll put that, that link in our description. If you if you send us the link, we'll put it in our description. Yeah, I think I think he has a Twitter for that or whatever. So okay, yeah. okay, yeah. So Washington I'll send DC, that. but is a that's yeah, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so it should be interesting. But I will be out in Virginia visiting, obviously with Ted, and then uh, we're gonna go up because he wanted to do that, and it sounded interesting. And being anti-war, obviously. I do want to say as as not I, I, I'm not going to make it clear what it is, but I do want to say that if you know Tet's real name, it's the most magnificently white name you've ever heard. Oh, I know his entire name. I just purposely yeah. don't say it like when I'm on a podcast or like there are no, some no, people on Twitter that I respond to him and I'm like, no, you can't say his real name <laughs> because he doesn't put oh, yeah. it out there. So I don't want to put it out there either. But I never it compromises would. his whole Tet thing. Which yeah, is yeah. Cyclical. I know. Yeah. Yeah. 
All that would I'm be saying weird at this point if I didn't, to be honest, because we've been yeah. like seeing each other since fe February and talking before that. So you my husband Tet always goes, life? "What? Do you call him Tet in real life? No, okay. no, I call him his real name." <laughs> so my husband always goes. I was following this guy. What happened? And I'm like, you have to understand, he loses his account every 30 days, but he just comes back. <laughs> like that Barney well, meme. Though, he has an impressive, like, bounce back. Yes. He does. He, like, yeah. guys. Like, wow. You know? yeah. um, but there's this meme of, like, Mo from The Simpsons throwing Barney out of the bar, and then Barney just appears behind Mo. That's Tet on Twitter. You yeah. just throw him out, and then he appears right behind him again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. All I wanted to say is when if if you ever learn about his real name, it's so exquisitely white. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> oh, it's it's. Which is it's actually really funny too because um, yeah, I think he said it in the group chat that we're all in, like what his name actually is. But he has the same name as my brother, and they are very similar it's kind of weird <laughs> i won't expound on it yeah <laughs> but i do think that names do shape you in some way yeah and i think that a lot of it is subconscious but that's a yeah. that's a long conversation yeah <laughs> um but with that um if you want to find ali on twitter you can find it at ali willingsley willingsby willingsby <laughs> which is totally her last name and that's all you no, need to know. No, it's totally her last name, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. <laughs> um, if you want to find me on Twitter, I am behind a padlock right now because I, I want a job. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I can get a little spicy. Um, but if you want to find me, it's at Cam Harless. If you want to find Jessica, it's at Soup Canarchist. I have been trying to talk her into changing her name because I think it would be pretty badass if her name was at Jessica the Green, but she doesn't look <laughs> <laughs> doesn't listen to me. Um, I have my reasons. <laughs> anyway, I got to pee. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> so other than that, rockfin.com slash the mad ones, patreon.com slash the mad ones. Uh, if you want a shirt, they're pretty cool. I like them. I think I did a good job. We are the mad ones.com slash store. Um, we are the mad ones.com. If you want to listen or on your favorite podcatcher, youtube.com slash the mad ones odyssey just search for it there's there's no good link for that um and then check out our other shows which there are we actually had an episode of lesbertarian come out the other day so it's more than just two shows now so that's that's great um but it's beyond that three it's three it <laughs> used to be like six but people moving on up suck. but beyond that uh that is all that's all i have for you so Dear audience, do you have anything to say, Jessica? Any last any last thoughts? I really have to pee. Jessica has to pee. <laughs> so with that, um, don't get arrested for something mm. stupid. Uh.